I'm Tom Daxon of Tom Daxon Fragrances. Uh, we were launched in 2013 and this was sort of our big Dubai launch at Quintessence. So Iridium would be the first one. Uh, so Iridium was basically is built around Iris. So the inspiration, I guess, for for most of these fragrances, and you'll see from the talk later, um, are just the ingredients themselves. So it's not kind of some you know elaborate concept behind it. Really, it's just we smell some of the ingredients. They're fantastic. We want to make a, a fragrance um, from them. So Iris, I think, is well known. Sort of how fantastic iris is as an ingredient, obviously very precious. Um, but really, iris is amazing. But it was trying to make an iris that I sometimes describe as smelling a bit grandmotherly, like quite old-fashioned, something your grandmother may have worn, basically. And I wanted to make something unisex um, and modern as well. So it's about sort of what you partner this amazing iris ingredient with, and we sort of used some um, aromatics, so juniper and angelica often use actually to uh, to flavour drinks as well, other things, gin. Very dry um, aromatics. Some carrot seed, which is kind of an, a really good natural partner to iris, because it's like kind of iris-like in the smell, but quite fruity as well. So it, iris, can, some people can say, smells a bit sad in a way. This kind of makes it a bit more cheerful. Um, got the iris, and then it's about dry woods, really, to make it smell quite um, sort of crisp is what I would say, crisp, woody, slightly silvery, so yeah, that's uh, iridium. So Magnolia Heights was the most recent one that we launched, um, and it was kind of inspired when we worked on Crushing Bloom, the, the last one we did before this, we tried using Magnolia Flower Oil, um, and Magnolia Flower is amazing. Uh, but it wasn't appropriate because it was too strong, it kind of overpowered everything else, it seemed like a waste to me um, to, to use it in anything else but its own fragrance. So we thought this can be fragrance number 10. Um, so we've taken the uh, magnolia flower oil, which is kind of fruity, I think it's like overripe peaches. Um, and with that, we've tried to partner it with kind of sympathetic things. So the, the, all the facets, it's called magnolia heights, it's kind of like a heightened version, I think. Often, what we want to do with the fragrance is trying to recreate what people imagine magnolia to smell like, maybe rather than exactly what it does. So you don't have to be totally faithful, it's about just enhancing the facets, and that's kind of what we're bringing to it, I guess. So, magnolia heights, as well as the magnolia flower, we've got Elang Elang, which has a really sort of over the top fruity, almost banana note to it, a gardenia um, accord as well. And then jasmine sand back in the body, which is this lovely animal. It's one of my favourite ingredients. It just adds kind of body to um, all the floral notes that we use. Um, and then again, some woods and some musk on the bottom. So hopefully, to make it quite unisex, so it's not just all kind of sweetness and light. Um, so some silky musk there and some cedarwood. Cedarwood actually has a slight milky note to it as well. Which is fantastic. Cillian Woods, like one of our best sellers. Um, I know you're a fan, so I've got a good receptive audience here. So, um, yeah, so Sicilian wood wanted a really fresh citrus. So I think the thing about ci woody citruses and citrus notes is citrus notes are everywhere. They're used in like, you know, the, uh, everywhere in the bathroom, like cleaning products, but they're often really cheap kind of synthetic ones. And if you've got the budget to use natural Italian good quality citrus oils, it's a bit of like a revelation to a lot of people, I think. Um, how like good it can smell, really. But obviously, natural citrus, it being such a volatile um, ingredient, they they're gonna dissipate quite quickly. So it's what you're left with after that. And we've sort of to give it a bit of warmth. We've put some spices in there, so it's cardamom, um, some floral notes. There's a lily of the valley accord. There being no natural lily of the valley, um, and then a big sort of sand, uh, sandwood, ambery base. Really, so very warm. So you've got that freshness at the start, and then it's a lot warmer as it dries. Yes. Right, so in fact, later I will be giving people a chance to smell it. It's not a finalised version, but um, we've we've started using oak wood. It's amazing. I mean, English oaks everywhere. You know, in England, like it's the most common tree. A bit like magnolia, it's actually not that commonly used an oil. Um, magnolia became commonly used. Oak wood is still quite rare. Um, and yes, it's been incredible. It's, it's like it's um, almost got a fruity start and this really rich balsamic 
note to it. Um, and yeah, they say that's what we're using to make almost what you would class as a traditionally kind of masculine, really woody, um, slightly smoky fragrance, but obviously, you know, it's going to be offered to both. So yeah, we're working on that, but it's not finished at the moment. I don't have a name. So I'm still trying to name it, which is the hardest thing.